was asked if I had to do something about domestic extremism. And I thought about it and I thought, no, because domestic extremism isn't exactly the issue I want to talk about. There's this idea today that environmentalists are the greatest threat to our way of life, that somehow environmentalism is a challenge to our economic order and the way we live today and how we do business. Well, that's true. And that's because that business does not work in a way that is sustainable. That then leads on to the idea that environmentalists in some way challenge the way the world works today. The next station is London Marylebone. Today I want to take on a little tour as I do my meetings around London. I'm going to take to a few places. First let's go to St Mary's Putney. Here in 1647, a very interesting and very little talked about event took place. In this church, the Putney debates were carried out between the Levellers and Cromwell and, and the army. And it's essentially the first time that in the modern era that the, those who were ruled debated with those who were ruling them over what the terms of that should be. And it's succinctly summed up in the, the quote from Thomas Rainsborough. For I really think that the poorest he that is in England have a life to live as the greatest he. And it didn't all go well for the levellers. Uh, some were hanged, some were hunted down and imprisoned. The Putney Debate Exhibition tells you an awful lot about what happened then. But what we can actually say was, although what they wanted at the time was considered extreme, that is what we consider as normal today in terms of our civil rights, that we do have the right to talk to our government and demand certain conditions are met. So now I have to go off north, so let's get on the tube and travel off across London. Throughout the history of, of the English state at least, uh, there's been a, a very systematic attempt to marginalise those people who the state doesn't like. And today that's how this idea of domestic extremism is being used. About ten years ago the Observer ran a story about how awful these domestic extremists were and how they threatened our way of life. And it turned out it was complete fabrication by the police officers involved. And the Observer had to withdraw the story. Well, if we move on to today, what we find is that same method is being used not so much just to marginalise certain groups in society, but to avoid talking about those issues. The automatic assumption is that if you talk about them, you are an extremist, or today, a non-violent extremist. This is Theresa May's new idea, that anybody who doesn't cause a problem can still be a threat to society. And where does that end? And, and this is something that we really need to focus on because it's being used to restrict our free speech. And on top of that, things like anti-fracking, saying that anti-frackers are backed by the Kremlin. Again, a fabrication to marginalise that whole discussion. We're now heading off down Farringdon Road. Oh, oh yes, look, there's a domestic extremist. You, you can tell by the beard. Oh, yes, hang on. Definitely there, you can see the buttons. Buttons domestic, definitely mark him out as domestic extremist. We're walking now up through Clark and Well Finsbury, off towards Bunhill Fields. And a bit like St Mary's Putney, Bunhill Fields is one of those places that's ignored in our history. Now, Bunhill is quite a famous Quaker meeting house. And out the back of the Quaker meeting house is where the founder of Quakerism was buried, George Fox, and many Quakers. But that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is this place, Bunhill Fields Cemetery. There are tens of thousands of people buried in this cemetery. And what they represent is you know, a whole load of people we consider today as the great and the good of Georgian and Victorian society. Bunhill Fields is what's called a dissenter or a, a, a non-conformist cemetery. If you were part of the Church of England, you were recognised by the state as being a good person, then you got to be buried in the city of London at St Paul's or something like that. If you were a dissenter, you were a member of a non-conformist religion, you were considered a bit dodgy, and so you were buried outside the walls of the city. 
So who are these dodgy people here? What sort of people are they? Well, they are people we consider the greats of our, of our literature. You've got John Bunyan, who wrote The Pilgrim's Progress, one of the, the great books of English literature. If we look over here, we've got William Blake. He composed the words to Jerusalem. We've got Daniel Defoe. He wrote Robertson Crusoe. And all these people, they were at the time considered a bit strange, a bit weird, because they weren't part of that Anglican tradition which respected authority and, and, and Whig culture of the time. Bunhill is right on the edge of uh, Old Street Tube, so we'll, we'll go to Old Street and up to Chalk Farm, and here we are walking down the road at the Primrose Hill. Anti-fracking is the latest example of where domestic extremism is being used to avoid this discussion about is fracking good or bad. And that's not good for our culture, it's not good for our democracy. More importantly, it's allowing the government to do things which are dangerous. Here's the view from the top of Primrose Hill. It's quite spectacular, all the, the major buildings of London. But there's one particular I want to point out to you. In the 70s there was quite a famous court case where a journalist showed pictures of the BT Tower, used to be called the Post Office Tower, and was prosecuted for breaching the Official Secrets Act. It's a big tower in the middle of London, how can it be an official secret? But it's the same mentality. If you make something restrictive, if you make it difficult to talk about, the government doesn't have to enter into that debate. And that's how things like fracking, Environmentalism generally, the challenge it has to the order, the established order, that's why it's a problem. Here we are, back at Malibin Station. A bit of time to wait to the next train. I hope my walk around London today has introduced you to the fact that domestic extremism isn't weird. It's an English tradition. It's something we've always done. And it's the way that we address ourselves and address those things in society which society has problems talking about, and we shouldn't fear it in any way.